tilapia. Just the name sounds frightening. The thing is, is that the health and fitness industry touts tilapia as this amazing protein source. But the thing is, is there's a lot of reasons why it's not the most amazing protein source, mainly having to do with how the stuff is raised and what we are absorbing when we consume it. You see, we have to realize that tilapia is cheap, it tastes pretty darn bland, and those particular fish will eat just about anything that we throw at them when we're farming them. So it makes it easy to produce. So of course it's going to be touted as this amazing food because it's cheap and it's easy and everyone can make money on it. But the thing is, is that tilapia is not healthy. And I wanted to do this video to explain three different alternatives that you can use when it comes to whitefish so you don't have to be eating tilapia. I'm not all about just giving you a scary video. I want to give you some real good information that you can use to make better choices and live a healthier life. But first, I have to scare you a little bit, so let me talk about tilapia. So tilapia is not a wild caught fish. It's almost entirely farmed. And less than 5% of the tilapia that you will ever eat is farmed in the United States. That means 95% or more is farmed in China or Latin America or some other country that does not have food regulation, or if it does, it's very minimal. So what this means is that those countries that are farming this fish can basically feed them anything. They can feed them soy, they can feed them grain, they can feed them corn, and they do. And that trickles down into our gut biome. That trickles down into us when we eat it because you are what you eat ate. Now the other thing is these fish are raised in such small confined areas that they are living in their own filth. This means that they're having to add copious amounts of antibiotics to the water. They're adding copious amounts of antibiotics to the water and to the fish's food so that they can survive in these environments that they ordinarily wouldn't survive in. Of course, the fish absorb that, then we absorb them from the fish that we eat, and that can make us antibiotic resistant. It can also kill off gut bacteria within our own gut, which defeats the purpose of getting the protein in the first place because then we're not absorbing it. In addition to that, tilapia is so low in omega-3s, which really is the main reason we wanna eat fish in the first place, it kind of defeats the purpose there too. In fact, in a study by the Academy of Nutrition and Dietetics, it was found that tilapia has the lowest omega-3 content of any of the fish out there. It also has an extremely high level of omega-6. Now, what that means is the omega-3 to omega-6 ratio is off, which therefore makes tilapia officially considered an inflammatory food, causing inflammation within the body at the cellular level. But that's enough scare tactic about tilapia. I think I've told you enough to not eat it. But what are the three options that you have that still taste good, but get you more benefit than tilapia? The first one is gonna be US raised haddock. See, haddock is another white fish that has the similar protein density to that of tilapia, except it's sustainably caught. So that means they're catching it at a rate wildly out in the ocean in which they can still procreate. We don't have to go to a point where we're farming them and raising them basically artificially. So you're gonna get similar protein structure, you're still gonna get the same amount of vitamin A, and you're still going to get the right amount of fats that you need. The next one on my list is gonna be California or Pacific halibut. Now again, same kind of protein density, higher levels of vitamin A, and also higher levels of omega-3 than omega-6. So at least you're getting that positive ratio to make it an anti-inflammatory food so you can actually absorb it. Now, lastly is probably my personal favorite, and that's going to be Alaskan cod. Now cod has a very similar taste to most other white fishes, except for the fact that cod is a little bit lower down the food chain. And what that means is it means it has less of a chance of absorbing mercury. You see, the lower down the food chain, the less of the environmental factors affect that food. So cod being that low down the food chain is a very safe alternative to tilapia, plus it tastes good, plus it's readily available frozen. And that's what I like to do. You can get it frozen, and again, it's frozen almost on the spot. So if it's wild caught and they're catching it in season when it tastes the best, they can freeze it and it's going to maintain its nutritional value. It's not going to be depleted. So when it comes down to it, go for the frozen cod. It's going to be cheaper than the tilapia and you're going to have the nutrient profile that you need to get the most out of it without the dangers of tilapia. So I hope I didn't scare you too much with this video, but at the end of the day, I just want you to have some information that's going to allow you to get the most out of your diet. As always, keep it locked in here on my page and watch those antibiotics. See you soon.